No project can completely transform the look of your house like a fresh coat of paint. And I know doing it yourself may seem daunting at first. It's a really large space, there's high areas, ladders, scraping, the whole thing. But I'm here to show you that even though it's a big project, it doesn't have to be all that difficult. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced painter, I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process and show you how to do it right. House paint jobs can last anywhere from five to over 20 years, depending on different factors. You know it's time to paint your house if you've got peeling or chipping or your color is faded. Expect this job to take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, depending on the size of your house, your skill level, and if you have any help along the way. Walk around the perimeter of the house and see what you're working with. This house hasn't been painted in many years and it shows. It's got peeling and chipping paint in many locations on varying surfaces. Odds are your house will also need some repairs before it's painted. Because it's an exterior, it's constantly exposed to all the elements. The exterior of this house is wood. We have horizontal siding, wood shingles, and wood windows and trim. Your siding material will dictate what materials you need to paint your home. One important note, if your home was built before 1978, it could have been painted with lead paint. Be sure to consult a lead safe certified contractor if you believe your home may have lead based paint. The first step in any perfect paint job is prep. It's as important as applying the paint. You need a well prepared surface for the paint to adhere to. For this house, we're gonna start off with scraping and then we'll move on to our second step, which is pressure washing. Now, many times you'll start with pressure washing, but for this particular house, we have so much cracking, peeling, and chipping paint that if we were to pressure wash first, the chips would go everywhere, all into the yard. So we need to scrape off first, get the majority of the loose stuff off, and then we'll follow up with pressure washing. Okay, now before we even touch the house, we need to protect the perimeter. I have my friend Mike, who's a professional painter, here to help me throughout this entire project. So, I know we have a lot of plants here and we're gonna have a lot of paint falling, so how are we gonna protect them? So we're gonna take some heavy duty plastic mm -hmm. and some duct tape, and we're gonna actually cover the shrubbery and we're gonna attach the plastic to the wall with this duct tape. So we're just gonna tape the plastic right onto like the base of the house, cover up the plants. The tape is actually stronger if you do it. Vertical strip? Yep. Okay. Exactly. And what mill plastic are we using for so this? So this is three and a half mil. So it's pretty thick. Yeah. Okay. All right, now that we have these pieces and it's attached, we're gonna run a horizontal piece all along where the house meets the plastic so that there's a complete seal and no chips can get down below. All right, now that our plastic is securely attached to the house, we're going to be adding canvas drop cloth runners because they're safer to walk on than the plastic, but when we go to position our ladder, I'm gonna pull it back and rest the ladder directly onto the pavement. Now that everything is protected, we're gonna get ready to start scraping, and we're gonna start from top and work our way down. So obviously, we're gonna need a little help getting up there. So Mike, you have a ladder stabilizer. Correct. So Mike's moved the ladder up two rungs, and he's gonna attach the ladder stabilizer. Now, this is why it's a two-person job. I'm gonna stand on the base of the ladder and put my full weight on it, and Mike is gonna walk the ladder up so that we have it safely vertical. And because we never wanna put the ladder base on the drop cloth, I'm just gonna fold it back a bit. Now, to properly hold the ladder and position it into place. You usually use both arms in the center of the rungs, one arm slightly raised, the other one down to hold the weight. Okay rather than side by side. You yep. don't want to hold the two sides, you want to hold this way. All right, now we need to determine the height of our ladder and to raise it up. And to do that, Mike's using this rope that comes attached to the ladder, and as he pulls, it's going to extend the ladder. When we get to our desired height, we want to make sure that the clips are securely on the rung, and they are, right? Yep, they Looking are. Good. You're going to keep your foot there. Okay. You're just going to slowly approach the house. Yep. Going in for a smooth landing. Great. Now that our ladder's in place, we need to do a couple checks to make sure that it's really safe and secure. Yep, give it a nice little bounce. Yeah, you basically want to pull it away a little and make sure it kind of lands in the same spot. Correct. Okay. And then the next step would be standing on the first rung okay. and just kind of give it a little bounce. Okay. So if it doesn't move, you're good. Here's a little trick for determining how far out from the house the base of your ladder should be. So Mike's going to come up and put his feet at the base of the ladder. Then he's gonna put his arms out directly in front of him, about shoulder height, right? right? And if that fits comfortably on the rung, then generally speaking, you're at a 75 degree angle here, which is what we want. All right, now that our ladder is in place and secure, it's time to start climbing. And Mike's gonna go up first. When you start climbing, you wanna put your hands on the rails. You never wanna do hands on the rungs. It's so much safer to keep them on the rails and kind of maintain contact as you're going up. It also keeps you a lot more balanced, so you're not tipping right. off. I never want to put my waist higher than the stabilizer, the top rung. 
All right, so you also don't want to overreach, right? Correct. Make sure you always keep two feet on the ladder, one hand on the ladder on one side, and you don't want to overreach because then what can happen is you can slip up here. Just an inch of movement up here will throw you off the ladder. The ladder stabilizer is kind of extending our surface area, right? Exactly. And yeah. making this a lot more secure and really keeping us from having any left to right motion. When choosing ladders for your paint job, you're going to have to think about the size of your home. You also want to check the weight limit of your ladder as well. All right, we're on to scraping, and I'm gonna show you there's a couple different methods for whatever surface we're dealing with. Right now, I'm gonna be down in the horizontal wood slats, and I'll do it a little bit differently when I work up above on the cedar shingles. I have two tools here. I have a scraper, which has a really sharp edge, and a handle so I can really put some muscle into it, but I wanna be careful not to damage the wood. And then I also have a simple putty knife here. And this is really good because it's not sharp on the edge and it won't damage the wood. Now, before I get started, I'm gonna make sure to protect my eyes. I am gonna put on a dust mask just to keep all the dust and paint chips from going in my face. And for this area, I'm gonna start off with the putty knife because it's really pretty loose in this area and chipping already. So the process here is gonna be to scrape, then sand in case we have any raised areas or ridges, and then to pressure wash. All right, so see in this area here, this paint is very well adhered to the house. So what we'll do is we'll hit this with the sander and it'll take down the ridge, but we don't need to keep chipping this away. All right, so that's how to do it on the horizontal wood, but now I wanna show you how to do it on the cedar shingles up above. Okay, so up here, we have a completely different situation. We have cedar shingles where no surprise here, the paint is peeling off, but we're gonna use a little bit of a different technique on this. What I'm going to do is make sure that I'm working in a vertical motion with this, a vertical one. I don't really wanna go horizontal much at all. If I need the paint scraper, the other scraper, I can do it, but right now I just don't wanna damage these. So I'm sticking with the putty knife and it's working just fine. Now that I'm done scraping, I'm gonna move on to sanding and I'm gonna go over the entire house again and spot sand any areas where the existing paint meets raw wood. I wanna knock down any ridges. There's a lot of texture on this home. Our plan here is to embrace that, not remove all of it. The homeowners wanted to keep some of that character. Not to mention, it would take us a crazy long time to strip the whole house to bare wood. So we're just smoothing out some of the ridges and bumps that need it the most. To do this, I'm gonna use an orbital sander and I currently have on 80 grit sandpaper. It really will depend on your old existing paint and what type of material you're working on, but I'm guessing it would be somewhere in the 60 to 80 range. Now, chances are before you paint, you're gonna need to do some repairs on your home. And obviously this is gonna vary from case to case, but I'm gonna share with you a little bit of what we're dealing with here. So you can see in this area, we have a rotted board here that definitely needs to be replaced. And down here along the base, this one's barely hanging on. What I'm gonna need to do is remove the rotting broken boards and then replace it with something in the same size and same like thickness here. But it doesn't need to be the same exact original material now to repair this board, the first thing I need to do is cut off some old nails that are there. This board is actually attached to the one above it with nails. And to do that, I'm gonna use my oscillating multi-tool and I have on a metal blade. All right, now that I have this off, I've taken some measurements and I'm going to head over to the saw and cut a new piece. The beauty of this is that you don't have to find the exact material that you're replacing, you just need to find the exact shape and size. What I ended up using is a pre-primed siding board that's six inches. The area that I'm repairing is longer than 12 feet, so I'm gonna have to use a couple boards, cut them down to size, and then I'll caulk the seam. I'm gonna go ahead and secure it using 16 gauge nails. I'm gonna nail on the board above it. Since we're using two boards here, it means our wood is gonna have a seam. So what I'm using is a piece of two mil plastic and that's gonna act as an additional moisture barrier. Now we're gonna come back afterwards and caulk this anyway, but it's just an extra tip to make sure we're doing a really good pro job. So this repair is complete and I mean, it looks awesome. We are gonna caulk this and we'll do that when we're ready to caulk anything around the house. Okay, it was a lot of work, but our house surface is prepped and now we're under pressure washing. 
Pressure washing will remove any loose debris and really clean the surface so it's ready for primer. Be sure to wear goggles to protect your eyes and be careful not to use too much pressure. This is a wood siding house with especially delicate shingles, so we're going with the lowest pressure 40 degree nozzle so as not to damage the siding. We're avoiding the windows and doors. If you've never used a pressure washer before, check out this video I did for step-by-step -step instructions. To figure out how much paint you'll need, start by measuring the house's perimeter or the distance around your house. Then multiply that figure by the height and you have the square footage of the total area you're painting. You can subtract around 15 square feet per window and 25 square feet per door. So for this house, it's 160 feet perimeter and 27 feet high, 4,320 square feet. We've got four dormers, each about 50 square feet, totaling 200 square feet, minus the doors at 50 square feet, and windows, which totaled about 480 square feet, it gives us a grand total of 3,990 square feet. Each gallon of paint covers about 400 square feet, and we're doing two coats. Plus, we're painting shingles, which may take more paint because of the rougher surface. So we're gonna need about 20 gallons of primer and 20 gallons of paint to get us through this job. For trim paint, we're gonna need about four to five gallons. There are quite a few windows in this house. We'll also need a few gallons of porch and floor paint for the front porch and back deck. So we have made some serious progress on this house. It has been scraped, it has been sanded, it has been pressure washed. And now before we can get any paint on the house, we need to focus on priming. Primer is a super important step that you do not want to skip in an exterior paint job. It does a few different things. It's going to block out stains, it's going to seal the wood, and it's going to ensure maximum adhesion. You want to make sure that this paint job really lasts. Because this home hasn't been painted in a while and we had to do a lot of prep work, we've chosen to prime the entire house. But you could also choose to spot prime. So this door is a good example. If you were just going to spot prime, you would focus on the areas where the raw wood is exposed. But we're going to prime the entire thing. I'm going to start with the horizontal siding and the shingles, and then I'll move on to the trim. We'll go from there. Now for the primer that we're using, I'm using Valspar Exterior Primer. This is gonna do all the things we need it to. Now, the one thing that's a little bit different about this is that I have gone ahead and actually gotten the primer tinted. So you'll see it's not white, it's a gray color. If you're painting your home a dark color, you're going to want to tint your primer. This is gonna make it so that you have to do less coats of paint to get the actual color you're going for. If I were to prime this house with white primer and then try and paint the house really, really dark, it could take me like four coats to get there. But with the tinted primer, it's only gonna take two. I have a couple different surfaces that I'm working with here. I have my horizontal wood siding and then I have my cedar shingles. And I'm gonna have a little bit of a different approach for both of them, but for the majority of this house, I'm gonna be using a paintbrush and a roller. You could choose to use a paint sprayer. This home is kind of close to its neighbors and also with the shingles, there's a lot of texture and nooks and crannies, so I don't feel like the sprayer is my best option. So it might take me a little bit longer to brush and roll, but that's the route I'm gonna take. All right, for my horizontal siding, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna brush the underside of each piece, and then I can come back and roll it if I want to. Now, we're only doing one coat of primer, so we wanna make sure that we have a nice, full coverage, even coat. The key to primer is just to make sure that you get everywhere. You wanna have really good, solid coverage. This is gonna determine the life of your paint job. Just a reminder, you're gonna to wanna to work from the top down, and even though this is the primer coat, you still wanna watch out for drips or globs. Okay, now for the shingles, the process is gonna be really similar. I wanna make sure that I'm gonna get up and under each shingle. And I wanna make sure I get into all the nooks and the crannies here. I'm not gonna roll these shingles at all either. It would be kind of a pain, even with a little four and a half inch roller. It's just gonna be a lot easier with my brush. Okay, so the process for priming the trim is almost the same as the rest of the house, except for the fact that I'm using a white primer for this. Since my trim is gonna be white and my door is gonna be light as well, both of those are gonna get the light colored trim. I don't need to use the tinted primer for this. I'm gonna cut this all in by hand, but a little pro tip, if you're not super comfortable with cutting in, you can always use painter's tape to mask off around your windows and where the two surfaces meet. As you're priming, you're gonna notice that there are some cracks and holes and things that we need to address. Don't don't worry, we're gonna take care of that after we prime. We first need it to have a really good coat so that any caulk or repairs have something to adhere themselves onto. All right, now for priming the porch ceiling, I'm actually using an oil-based primer. This is really important because you can tell here, see these brown spots? 
This is the tannin from the wood coming through. So that means that this was either not primed before or primed with a latex primer, which just will not stop these tannins from bleeding through. So this coat of primer is gonna block out all these tannins from coming through and staining it. So my fresh coat of paint, I'm not gonna have to worry about that bleeding through. And as you can tell, I'm geared up a little bit differently. I have gloves on, eyewear, and a hat to protect the hair since I'm doing this kind of upside down the whole time. After our surfaces and trims are primed, next we move on to caulking. And we're gonna be caulking a lot of different areas. We're gonna be caulking under the eave, all the way around the house. We're gonna be caulking all around the windows. We're gonna be doing in between every single one of the horizontal boards on the house. The reason why we caulk after our primer coat has gone on and dried is that it gives it a surface to adhere to. So now we have a nice clean surface, the caulk's going to adhere, and then it's gonna last longer. We're using a quick dry exterior acrylic paintable caulk. It's gonna be paint ready in 20 minutes. The idea here is to really button everything up so that when we put our finish coat on, it's gonna look perfect. You guys, it is time to get some paint on this house. We are gonna start by painting the trim. It's a preference thing. You may choose to paint your siding first. I prefer to paint my trim first. I think it's easier to cut in the opposite direction. To do this, I am using Valspar's Duramax. This is intended to withstand the elements and will resist chipping and fading. We really want this paint job to last, so this is a great choice. I'm doing it in the semi-gloss finish so that it just has a little bit more pop. It's also mold and mildew resistant, which is really important as well. Done with the trim, and now I get to move on to the siding, and this is gonna have a big impact. For this siding, I'm using the same Valspar Duramax, but this time in a flat finish. It's gonna give the house a really nice matte look to it. The siding color is a really deep navy, almost black, and you can see now why tinting the primer was so important. As this paint is going on, it's almost its true color. If I had gone with a white primer, it would've been a lot more coats. Now, there's a lot of texture on these shingles still, and we knew that, and we want it. That's called character. The flat finish will allow the kind of imperfections in the texture to read as intentional and weathered in character, and it won't come off as any sort of imperfection. Mike's already gotten a head start on me and been painting the eave all the way around the house. Now, one thing to note here is the eave's kind of considered trim, so even though I wanted it the dark color of the rest of the house, I did that in a semi-gloss finish, so it has a bit more pop to it. Anytime you're dealing with extension ladders and paint, you're gonna need something to help you hold your can of paint while you're up there painting. This is where a paint pail hook comes in. It will be your best friend. For this beadboard area, I think it's easiest just to roll it and then come back and hit in the areas that I missed in the grooves with a brush. All right, I'm just filling in my grooves with a brush. Little pro tip here, I can do this in this order on the first coat, but on the second coat, you always want your rolling to be the last thing you do so you don't have any brush marks. And we are done. It is incredible the transformation this home has undergone with this new paint job. It's amazing what you can do when you prep and paint the right way. I love how this entire project came together and my personal favorite part is the pink door. It adds just the right amount of personality and pop of color. And most importantly, the homeowners are thrilled. I hope that if you're considering painting your home that you now feel confident and empowered to do it the right way. I'd love to know what you all think of this transformation, so leave me a comment and let me know. Also, as always, all the products I use in this video are linked in the description below. Want to learn more? Be sure to check out the Lowe's YouTube channel for great step-by-step -step and how-to videos and lowes.com slash how-to for all kinds of projects.